Okay guys, in this video, I'm going to go over a technique that is going to allow you to find lower budget, smaller products that aren't moving super fast and moving a ton of units every single month, which will allow you to once again, start with a lower budget. Cause let's be honest, we all don't have a ton of money to start Amazon FBA. I know when I did, when I started Amazon FBA, I didn't have a ton of money. I started with 900 bucks, but once again, with the low budget method, these are going to be products that are moving slower. I don't have a ton of search volume and that frankly, not a ton of people are, you know, looking at because for the more competitive products, people want to be actually making a lot of money and a ton of money. And so obviously those products are going to require you having a bigger budget to do a bigger starting order and ultimately will be a lot more competitive and you will be you know fighting against bigger and bigger people who have bigger and bigger budgets and actual companies so once again if you don't have a ton of money it is okay what we want to do is focus on a cheaper product that will allow us to get our foot in the door to learn the different ropes of the amazon fba business model and essentially once again get confidence that you can eventually move on to bigger and bigger products and get used to spending more and more money to make more and more money and the main reason why a lot of people don't want to start is because because they feel like they're taking a big risk and they may have to drop, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars. And so a lot of times that can be very risky. But once again, if we're not actually willing to spend money to make money, then this business model isn't for us. And here's the thing. We have to be willing to spend money to make money. That is the name of the game for Amazon. And if we're starting with a smaller, lower starting budget, then it will be a lot easier to get your foot in the door and essentially have a lot less risk. So if you're excited to get started and do product research to find your first product to sell on Amazon and eventually make passive income while doing so, then smash the like button and subscribe down below because I release step-by-step -step videos every single week describing the entire process on how to sell on Amazon. With all that being said, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're on Helium 10, which is the software and the tool that we use to look at all the products on Amazon and see exactly with all those products, we put specific criteria into Helium 10 so that we can actually filter and get a subset of products that we're really interested in based on the criteria that we feed into Helium 10. And so with all that being said, we need to be focusing on low competition products. Now, why is that? If we have a small budget, that means that we're not going to be able to do, you know, massive innovations and massive, you know, things to really, you know, solve, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do. So we're on a small budget. So we have to be focusing on products that are not super competitive and that do not require a big, big innovation and a big, big amount of uniqueness and changing the product too much. So with that, um, let's get directly into Helium 10. So once again, we're going to come to the tools, click on the drop down menu, and we're going to be using black box. Now, Black Box is so powerful because it allows us to look at, once again, all the products on Amazon and put our specific criteria into it so that it can filter and show us the products that we're actually interested in. So if we come to the keyword method, which is basically instead of the product method, as you see right here, if we just were to hit search, it would show us all of the products based on no criteria. And so with this, we're looking at specific products. But if we come to the keyword method, Basically what it will show us is sometimes, a lot of times, uh, broader keywords that you can have, have a ton of different products underneath. And so you can figure out that you can find products that are not super specific, but more, you know, a bigger viewpoint of what you could sell under a specific keyword. So it's very important. So we're gonna be using the keyword method. And so for search volume, when it comes to search volume, a search volume that I like to start out with is a thousand searches and we will go upwards of 6,000 searches. Now, once again, you can play around with all the criteria that I'm going to give you, but these are going to be specific products that are not super competitive. And by competitive, they're not having a ton of searches, meaning that everyone's trying to buy it. There's a lot of money in that market and, not, and then everyone's going to be trying to sell that product, which will make it more and more competitive. So the lower you can go in search volume, um, up to a point where you're not making money, but the lower you can go, a lot of times will be less competitive. And so you want to be going, you know, outside of the range of the super competitive products, but still within the money range. So a thousand to six thousand is where I like to start. Um, monthly revenue. Now, once again, we're going to be doing three thousand to fifteen thousand dollars in revenue. 
Now, something to note, if you're selling $3,000 a month in sales, you're going to be profiting around $1,000. If you're selling $15,000, you're going to be profiting around $5,000. And so it's, re it's roughly around one third of what you actually sell is what you're going to be getting a profit. But once again, that's going to be based off of a 33% profit margin. And so we want to be sticking to around 30 to 35% profit margins just so that we're actually making a decent profit. And we're not just selling a bunch of units and not actually being profitable in our business. Now, we can go higher, obviously, but once again, the higher we go, the more and more competition there's going to be. And we can go lower, but if we go super low, then we're not actually profiting anything. If we're selling, you know, a thousand dollar a month product, then we're only really profiting, you know, 300 bucks a month, which is going to be not that much for all the amount of work that we're going to put into this process. But once again, um, we're going to stick around here and you can go slightly higher. Um, but just, just know that the higher you go, the more and more competitors there will be. Now, in terms of price, I will do, let's do, um, once again, this is going to be for a low competition product that is going to be for a lower budget. Now, with that being said, we're going to do the price of $10 to $30. To $30. And for a low budget, we're going to need to stick to products that are slightly um, less expensive. But once again, um, it's just going to be for our very first product to get our feet wet to learn the business model and once again as we move on with bigger and bigger budgets we want to have better and better profit margins and that will only happen once we have a higher price that we're selling the item for now for the review count i like to do a maximum of 200 reviews just to get started but once again for all this criteria you can go up you can go down but just make sure that you're changing it a little bit every now and then so you can get different products popping up. Now, if we scroll down and hit search, it's going to show us all of the different products that are actually popping up. Now, that being said, what we want to look for are going to be products that we don't know what they are, products that stand out to us, things that maybe interest us and things that are just different. Now, things that we don't want, things that we don't want to be focusing on like a pop pro Paw Patrol Imitation Birthday. That's going to be a big brand of the Dis uh, Disney Channel show, Paw Patrol. Um, I know my little brother used to watch it. Uh, he used to watch it too, honestly. But uh, we don't want to be focusing on this. Paw Patrol, rhinestone bikinis. Bikinis or, and things that have different sizes, like a small, medium, large. It's going to be too many um, units that are not being sold because there's going to be a medium um, size that most people will fall into. Religious Easter stickers, once again. Seasonal. We're not going to be focusing on seasonal products. Religious Easter um, stainless steel hinges. Uh, a little bit interesting, but we're gonna keep going. I will open up stainless steel plates. I'm just curious what that is. And once again, when you see things that you're curious about or that have interest to you, then you wanna open them up. Hello Kitty, once again, big brand. Dinosaur wall art. I will open this up, not to sell, but to just show you guys a example. Um, vintage Easter, once again, Easter. Stay away from envelope seal stickers. Not interested in stickers or double-sided tape, monster truck, birthday, football party flavors. I will open this one up. Um, we have Texas Rangers shirt, water hammer, washing machine, death row records. Once again, t-shirts and clothing items I'm not interested in because it's a ton of sizes. Basket tray, I will open this up. I do like the kitchen and dining category. Um, let's go down, nail polish, cotton webbing. I will open up cotton webbing. I'm not sure what that is. It sounds like it could be an interesting product. Um, we'll go to the second page. I'm gonna do the first three pages just to find a couple products. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go through each of these examples one by one so I can show you exactly the reason why or why not I would choose a product to sell. Now, um, artificial insemination kit. For, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna open it up. Rainbow pinata, no. Transfer for furniture, no, no. Easter dish towels, no. Seasonal, no. Celebration of life, guest book. Mm -hmm. African art wall decor. I'm gonna open this up and show you guys the reason or the reason why I would or would not do that. BMW door light logo. Not interested in uh, copyrighted logo. Um, worship flags for dance. Soccer party supplies, Ray Mysterio, um, gluten-free orzo pasta. Not interested in food either. Um, Google Pixel case waterproof. And so what you notice that a lot of times if you see like, you know, different cases, like whether it's an Apple, uh, an Apple iPhone 13 case or a Google Pixel case waterproof, a lot of times people will get into this right once, once a new device launches and they will make a lot of money. But once again, if you're late, 
to the game and you try to come in later, then you would just get swarmed with competitors and ultimately you have to be early for things like that. Glossy brochure, paper, no. And go to the third page and then we're going to look at these results that we have. Um, Brazil's small thank you gift bags. That could be interesting, but I'm not super interested. Uh, ginger ale, hand soap tablets. I'm gonna open that up. I've never heard of that, but it sounds like it could be pretty, um, I can make a unique version of that. Dog leash holder for wall. We're gonna open this one up as well. Um, Greek paddles, sorority panels, claw earring for women, bowling party favors, cool phone cases, um, baseball flavor, um, paper tablecloth, lightning queen. And so one thing that I will say is that once you're doing product research, what I would really recommend you guys to do is go through all of the 10 pages. And what you will notice a lot of people do is they only go through the first you know, one to five pages. And then these pages are here, this is where a lot of times I can find um, products that maybe don't have a ton of eyeballs on. So we'll go to page 10 just to just so I can show you guys and I'll pick a product or two from here. Easter grass bulk, no flowers for two years, no prom dress patterns, no um, cow shower curtains for bathroom. I will just open this up, I'm just interested in that. Um, Ukrainian shirt, wo woven tray, I will open up this as well. And I'll take one more. Mushroom spores, counterpart pants, spur, lap tote bag, no, no, duck light, no. Glue shaker, no. Okay, and with that being said, let's get exactly into examining these products. All right, so if we go to the very first products, which are going to be the stainless steel plates. Now, disclaimer, for all these products, we wanna be looking at three different things. We wanna be looking at the lowest review count, relative to the most amount of money or most amount of revenue they're making relative to the least amount of products. Because if you have lower reviews making more money with less potential competing products, then that's going to be the best product that you should be entering into. You don't want to be focusing on a product that has a ton of reviews making no money with a ton of sellers. You want to be focusing on low reviews, more money, not as many competing products. Now, in terms of competing products, we can just come to the left-hand corner and we can see that there's over 50,000 results for stainless steel plates, meaning that there's over 50,000 different Amazon sellers who are selling a stainless steel plates. Now, if we were to take that in comparison to this next product, which is the dinosaur wall art, we have over 5,000 results. So we can already see from 50 versus 5,000, the dinosaur wall art is going to be a lot less competitive of a product. And we can also tell that basically simply just off of, you know, the name of the product, stainless steel plates. That's very, 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 very broad and overarching. Whereas dinosaur, um, you know, wall art could be, you know, more niche and more, you know, specific of a product. But once again, we're, fo we're focusing on the number of products as well as the reviews. So if we come down and we see the first four sponsor, we're going to ignore these and we're going to look at the first organic um, review. Actually, we'll do it for the stainless steel plates. We're going to look at ignore the first four sponsored and we're going to look at the first four organic um, reviews. Now, with this being said, we can see that there is someone who has a single review already in the first um, four spots. And then we have 230, 750, 100 reviews. Go a little further down. We're going to move past this highly rated because this is sponsored right here. And so we're going to look at the next organic results, which are going to be 14, 10, 26, and 368. So even though this is going to be more products um, for this specific category, um, it still is a lot of new players who have low reviews. And so once again, the last thing we're gonna look at is the actual money. Because if they're new and they're not making money, it doesn't matter um, how new they are, who cares if we have to be making money for these products. And so with that being said, uh, let me move this over here. And so we can look at the specific data for stainless steel plates. And we're going to look at each of these products individual, individually and see which products are going to be the most low hanging fruit. That's a term I like to use because you know, you want to be focusing on the low hanging fruit products. You don't want to be tackling a product that is you know, super competitive with no money and there's a ton of people selling it. So with that being said, if we scroll down and we can actually just um, delete these first four sponsored because they're paying to be in those spots. So I'm gonna trash, remove them. And now we have the first organic result. So if we scroll over, 
Um, so different columns we have are the product, the ASIN, the brand name, the price, the number of sales, the sales graph history, the amount of revenue, which is what we're going to be focusing on, the BSR, FBA fees, and then if we come all the way over, we have the review count. So we're going to be looking at the review count relative to the revenue that they're actually making. Um, with that being said, if we go down each of these products, we can see the very first one is 100 reviews, $2,000. 800 reviews, $9,300. One review, $2,000. And so once again, we're going to be sticking in that price range of, you know, around $3,000 um, the, as the bare minimum to around $15,000. So the more money they're making relative to the number of reviews, that's going to be better. And so we can see that there's new people once again. But once again, we have the one guy who's making 2014 reviews, making 2600 10 reviews, making 1500 2 reviews, 26 reviews, making, you know, 2000 and so we can see that there is a decent number of new players, but once again, for the amount of revenue they're making and the overall amount of products that are in here, which was once again, over 50,000. And the fact that this is a very basic product and there's really no way to innovate it. You know, everyone's selling a stainless steel dinner plate. The only real thing that you could do is sell, okay, I have 10 plates. Now I'm selling 15 plates because he's selling 20 plates. And you know, the only thing you can really do is just play is just play a plate game. Who's selling the most plates? And I don't like to do products like that. I like to do a product that I can make more unique, offer more value, and ultimately, and ultimately innovate the product. So we're going to go on to the next product. All right, for the next few products, we're going to run through them a little bit faster because we want to get through this, all these examples. And now the next one is the dinosaur wall art. So once again, we know it has 5,000 different sellers in this specific keyword. And now for this, we're gonna ignore the sponsored products as you see right here, and we're gonna scroll down to the first organic. Now we can already see that these have um, slightly more reviews, 200, 500, and then we have a couple lower reviews. We scroll down past the highly rated sponsored. Once again, we're gonna skip past these, scroll back down, and then we're looking at the next left set of four. So we can see that they're all 59 reviews and under. So once again, this is going to be a better category because as we saw here, th these ones had high reviews or where's it at? Um, where's it at? Yeah, these ones right here, high reviews, lower. Um, these four, even lower. If we go to the next four, some of them don't even have reviews at all, which is a great sign. Um, but once again, we have to check to see how much money they're making. So if we come to x-ray and we throw them in x-ray, it's going to see if this is actually even profitable because off the bat, it has less competing products less reviews for the products who are competing, but if they're not making money, who cares? Because we need to make money, we need to be profitable in Amazon. And so if we just scroll past the first four sponsored, scroll over and we look at the revenue. Now, obviously these first two, 200, 500 reviews, they're going to be making a lot of money. So we have 5,000 and 17,000, but the 41 review guy has 10,000 in revenue, which is a great sign. And if we look at um, this, Basically, the, re the review count column, they are all under 100 reviews um, if you're not counting these first two. So, you know, you have eight out of the 10 products on the first page are under 100 reviews. And so this is already going to be a very good sign that you can make money in this category. Now, if we look at um, more revenue, we have the one guy who's more of a, more so of an outlier. He's making 10,000, but everyone else is making, you know, a couple hundred to, you know, 2,000. Now, are they making crazy money? No, they're not. But what you could do is you could come up with a very good, um, what you want to do is basically do your research. So you know that this guy is making 10,000. Now you have to ask yourself, why is he making 10,000? The answer is going to be because his product is going to be looking a lot better than everyone else's. So we can see he has a four different um, art pieces versus this guy. This is a pretty cool, but you know, everyone didn't like it. This one is doing better. You know, it has all the different dinosaur types. And so what you would need to do is, you know, you need to come up with what are the winning products in this category? What are they doing well? How can you actually come up with a better version of what they're doing well, make it more unique and offer it at a good price? Now, if we come back down to this actual category, we see that they're all selling dinosaurs. Now, me personally, I'm not the most creative person. So this may not be a category that I want to enter in because you have to be super creative and you have to actually think of a very good design. And if you're like me and you're not super creative, then Maybe you would do this or maybe you wouldn't because it definitely requires a creative eye for this. And so um, you could get away with it if you know what to do and if you really know how to make a really good first picture stand out. And so this is a product that requires you to be more creative. I personally would not be interested in this product even though it was a better buy than the stainless steel 
plates. Now let's go into the third product, which is going to be the football party favors. Now me personally, once again, I'm not interested in this product. And the strict reason is because um, they're all selling basically the same exact thing. They all have a bunch of different um, items. It's almost confusing to me. It kind of gives me like uh, anxiety looking at these because they're all the exact same. And it's honestly very hard to even choose if I was to buy this product, which one I want to go for because they all have the all the, the giant blow up looking footballs and they all have the wristbands and it's just, it becomes, you know, a game of who has the most things on their photo. And then if you have a lot of things like this guy right here, it's still, it's hard to even see what the things are. So right off the bat, even though um, they might have lower reviews, which they actually do, and there may be money in this product, I'm still not super interested in it because once again, everyone, I, I don't really see anyone having a sense of uniqueness in this category, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Now, and a lot of times you will find that with actual, um, you know, party favors and, you know, gifts, th giftable items like this. Not, not necessarily giftable items, but main, mainly, you know, party, you know, ba gift bags and all that. It becomes very, very, um, you know, what can you stuff in your first picture? And I'm just not into that personally. Now this basket tray. Now this could be a potential good item because I I do I definitely like the home and goods, the you know kitchen and dining type products because they're very simple and you can make them more unique. Now with this being said, um, if we look at the first couple of sponsored, we're gonna skip past that. So the first organic person has 143 views, which is not bad for the very first spot. Now if we look further, we have the next four. They all have under 100 reviews which is once again, a, a very, very good sign that we wanna be looking for. And now with that being said, the price point isn't too bad. It's, you know, 20 bucks. And so this item may cost anywhere from, you know, three to eight bucks, depending on, you know, what kind of quality you're going for. Um, and so if you put it into um, Helium 10, we can see exactly how much you're making in revenue. If we scroll back up really quick first, there's over 20,000 results for basket tray. So, with that being said, we can also even niche down further. And I will show you guys exactly what I'm talking about in a second because I already see different designs. I see a circle one and I see a rectangular one. And so we can use that to our advantage and figure out the, the, the basically the least competitive of these different types of basket trays. Now, if we look past the first four sponsored, we come over to the review count. We can see that on the first, out of the first 10 or so, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them that have under 100 views, which is a very, very good sign. Now, they're not making crazy revenue, but they are all making 1,000 to 10,000, which is a good sign. They're in the, and, and honestly, majority of them are making, you know, 4,000, 7,000, 8,000, 2,000, 4,000, really, it's like four making 4,000. So it's a very, very good sign that this is going to be, you know, allowing us to make at least 1,000, 1,500 a month in actual profit and allow us not have a not ha not have a you know crazy chance of actually doing it. If we have a great product picture and we do something slightly different, make it more unique, then we can really come to this market and actually you know succeed in it. Now, with that being said, what we're going to do is we want to actually look at are there any potential subsets of the market? I clicked on something. Let me go back. But basically, when I say that, what I mean is. Are we able to niche down even further? Because we have the main keyword basket tray, correct? Now with basket tray, there are different sizes. As we can see, we have a circle basket tray. We have a rectangle basket tray. You know, a rectangle, once again, circles. And so we can even see like um, round serving basket. Um, poly wicker uh, rectangular platters. There's, there's, there's a ton of different keywords. And so... What we can do is actually look at these specific keywords. So we have the round basket tray. If we type in round basket tray. And so we're going from 20,000 results before I click this, 20,000 results. And now let's see exactly how many round basket tray um, results there will be. So from 20,000, now we have 6,000 competitors. And now this is already going to be a lot easier um, of an item and a lot more specific because we went from basket trays, which are very general. It could be any type of basket tray to a round basket tray. And if we were to type in rectangular basket tray, I bet it it might even be rectangular, if I could spell it, basket tray, it may even be less results, 4,000 for the rectangular basket tray. And so we can see that if we niche down from basket tray to round, it's less. From round to rectangular, it's less. And now that may be a good thing or may not be because if there's less people, but there's ultimately 
a lot less searches, then you know that's really going to um, paint a better picture. So if we come to X-ray and we type on and we click on the extra extension and we can see exactly how many searches there are for the rectangular basket tray. And so basically um, we want to see, so searches are not even available. And a lot of times when they have less than a thousand searches, it won't show that. So I'm assuming that's the case. But if we look at the revenue relative to the review count, we have Six reviews, 2,000, 72 reviews, 4,000, you know, 48. We're gonna actually ignore the first sponsored person and this guy. We're just gonna just move, remove these two right here because they're paying to be in that spot. Even though they are making that money, we still just wanna look at the organic reviews. And so we have basically everyone except these two have under 100 reviews, which is a great sign. Um, and we have decent revenue from anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000, majority of them having two, three, four, five. Um, and so once again, that is a great sign. It makes it to where we know that there's new players coming in who have not a ton of reviews and who have, you know, who, who are making decent revenue. And a lot of times you will start with making a certain amount, but as you keep getting more and more reviews and you keep indexing for more and more keywords, that will slowly go up and up. So even though it's starting here and, you know, in a couple of, you know, months, they could be 100 reviews, 200 reviews, and be making, you know, five, ten thousand. And so it's just, you know, really just starting, doing good, connecting for more and more keywords, and ultimately, you know, you can make more and more money as you keep going. Now, with that being said, if you look at the rectangular basket, we saw the um, review count relative to the revenue. Now we can also, once again, look at the round basket tray. And now with this, we're going to get a different set of products and a different set of um, searches. And so once again, the last search term for the rectangular, it was less than a thousand. Now for this one, we have, once again, it was more products. So this one, the round one had 6,000 competing products. The rectangular had 4,000. So for the round one, we have, um, for 6,000 competing products, we have a thousand searches per month. So it's more competing products, but also more searches. And so if we look at the specific revenue, we scroll back over. Let's just get rid of the sponsored once again, throw them in the trash, remove them. And if we look at the review count, so it is it is more competitive. We have one, two, three, four out of the top 10 who have um, over 100 reviews, but we still have six who have under 100 reviews, which is still, still a very good sign, you know? And so if you look at the revenue, they are definitely all making above $3,000, which is a very good sign. So even though that, even though the rectangular, um, Basket trays were less competitive. They are making slightly less money. And so the round ones are slightly more competitive, slightly more competitive and have slightly more products, but they're making more money. And so what you need to do, you can't really make an informed decision off of that. You need to actually dive into the markets, click on the first um, top 10 products, look at the reviews, look at the negative, the positive, what they're doing good, what they're doing bad. See how much it's going to cost to source this product on Alibaba. So if we just simply come to find suppliers on Alibaba, then we can get you know in touch with a bunch of suppliers who have already you know prices for us and so we need to contact you know 20 to 30 suppliers and really just get a very good indication on what people are charging for this for these materials for the size for the shape and just really get a good idea of what the market is going to be what you need to fix what you need to do better because even though all these products are selling they're not all selling to the best of their ability there's going to be some that are selling better than others and so you need to figure that out, spend your time in the market and ultimately come up with a plan so that you can actually succeed. And so another thing that you want to focus on is exactly how you're going to differentiate yourself. So if we look at the, the round baskets, we see that they all have relatively the same color. And so if we keep going, we can see this guy right here ha has a lighter color. And so let's say you were to offer an all white, you know, almost shiny um, woven round basket. That would, in my opinion, sell better than all these and differentiate yourself so that you're not actually sticking in with everyone else, but you're actually standing out. And so just simple, having simple color changes. What you also could do is maybe you offer, you know, one size and, you know, two more smaller sizes, whatever it is, you want to be figuring out exactly how you can stand out for an affordable price and make yourself unique in the market. That's very, very important because if you just blend in and you sell the exact same product, once again, you have no uniqueness. And so you, it, 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 there's basically no specific reason on why someone is going to choose your product and no specific sure 
ensured reason why you're going to succeed because you don't have any uniqueness and you look like everybody else. And really quickly before we go to the next product, there's one more thing that we can actually look at if we look at the actual sponsor results. So make sure that you're paying attention to what you see. And we see that there is a hexagonal um, basket tray. So if we just type in the word hexagonal basket tray, from 20,000 results, we have 287 results. So we see that this is the least competitive product now, and maybe it's not making money, but essentially you want to go down to each of these markets and see exactly what is going to be the best product. You want to spend hours in the market or, or off, off, off the forefront. You want to spend you know a couple minutes into the products to see if you're actually interested. Once you get interest, you want to spend at least an hour, two hours looking at the round, the rectangle, the hexagonal basket trays and figure out exactly which one is going to be more penetrable, which one has the less competition, the less reviews for making money, and ultimately which has the least amount of products that is going to allow you to come up with a better product that's more unique, different color, different size, whatever it is. It's going to be really allow you to put your own twist on the product, make it very, very premium, professional looking, and ultimately steal sales from everybody else. Now, if we go to the next product, um, we have cotton webbing. And I'm just going to skip this product for just for the sake of the video um, because once again it's a very simple product and there's only a difference in colors and we should move on because this video is going to be too long to be honest it's going to be too long and so if we look at the artificial insemination kit for dogs once again this is a kit and everybody's looks the same so once again i'm not interested because it's going to be very hard to stand out in markets like this this was the same thing with um where is it at it was the same thing with um the football party favorites. The same thing with, you know, some kits, it can be the exact same thing. Now we have hand soap tablets. Now right off the bat, we can see that there's a lot, even just based off the sponsor, which we can actually look at just for this quick instant, there's a lot of branded um, products. And so that's not an issue, but once again, for your very first product, if you're competing with, you know, these aren't super established brands, but just people who are spending more on packaging, more on the um actual individual packaging of the hand soap tablets which i definitely recommend but for your very first product if you have a small small once again this video is for low budget products then it may not make the most sense to focus on things that are going to have a higher barrier of entry um, and so once again we're competing with dove and you know bigger brands so this specifically for this low budget method may not be the best product and um Essentially, you're going to spend a lot of money on advertising and product pictures, which once again can be, you know, alleviated. But if you're really on a tight budget, then we're going to move on to the next product, which is going to be a dog leash holder for the wall. Now, with that being said, we have um, a bunch of different types of products. And so we see that this one and this one are the same, except for the color. This one's different. This one's slightly different. We scroll down. Now we have less appealing ones, in my opinion, these are sponsors, so we're gonna ignore those. So this one's kinda, you know, I guess interesting. This one's cool. But um, you see that there's a, a ton of different designs. And so that, once again, will allow you to come in with your creativeness and fight, figure out a design that maybe is working, but also maybe take another design. Like this one has paw prints, paw prints, paw prints. They all use the paws, but different designs. This one actually has a dog, a little, um. I don't know whatever dog it is, but it has a dog on top of it. And so they thought I'll type the box. So if you're interested in trying out Helium Tan, I have a code down below in the comment section and the description. If you made it this far in the video, smash the thumbs up button and subscribe down below because I release multiple step-by-step -step tutorials every single week showing you how to sell on Amazon FBA. With all that being said, make sure that you're changing the criteria and make sure that you're actually spending time doing product research every single day. Make sure that you do product research every day over the course of a week. Compile an entire list of products that you can potentially want to sell and that you want to go through the next step with. And now this entire list, you want to choose you know, the best winning product that has the least amount of reviews, the most amount of money, and ultimately the, ultimately the least competitive, meaning that there's going to be less and less in the least amount of um, competitors actually selling that product. That's very, very important. You want to maximize your chances of success and minimize your chances of risk. So with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.